UK. Um, we're, we're near Franchuk uh, in the Cape Winelands, and it's the first day of the season, Saturday the 9th of August, and uh, I'm going to interview my mate Paul um, about Walsall and stuff. Here we go, right. So Paul, you've been out here for um, for almost a year. Is it almost a year? It is almost a year now. Yeah, yeah. And um, so what do you what do you miss? It's first day of the season, a couple of hours before kick off. How are you feeling? I'm not as excited as I would have been if I was here in Warsaw, that's for sure. You know, the build up to the game, the build up to the whole season, the new signings. Um, I've not seen the new signings, a lot of new names I don't know about, new young players that are coming through, not seen play, so that level of excitement has gone a little bit. So, um, it's come five o'clock, what will you be thinking? Will you want to be in that internet cafe? Will you want to be waiting for Dave's text? I still want to know what's going on, yeah. You never lose the interest. You know. What if they lose? If they lose, they lose. I'm used to them losing. That's you know, a fact of life. A couple of years ago, you talked to me about a glory year. You talked to me about, you, from day one, you said, this, this is the glory year, and we'll look back on this year, and it'll be the best thing ever. What if this turns out to be the glory year, and you're in South Africa? You're stuck here. I mean, look at this. I was starting to think that about halfway through last season, actually, thinking, you know, we, we, the glory years are going on. Money's going to be like Dario Gradi. All these young kids are going to come through. There's going to be like 10 years of unstoppable success at Warsaw. And I'm missing it all out here, so uh, I've been to that already. Okay, but you don't think it's not going to happen, is it? No. History tells you it'll just be the usual up and down. You'll get a good team together for a year, a year and a half, you'll do something, and then it'll fall apart. You sell the best players to Coventry, and then Ricketts clears off again, and you're back to square one. So why should I give them my money? Um, you know, selling selling your two best players in in January, not being clear about the level of debt that exists at the club, um, servicing loans from um, from outside the board of directors. Why, why should they have my money? What do you think about that? As my, that's the first reason why I've fallen out of love. You need to look at it. As you're not you are giving them your money, obviously by attending or some part of your money. But you need to look at it. You're getting something out of it yourself. You need to re-examine your relationship with the club and dip in and out as and when you want to. You, if you want to go to big games, go to big games. If you want to go to games when certain friends are there or to grounds you've not been to before, do that. Don't let them stay, keep you away. But you, know, you just need to, to settle on what your level of involvement needs to be. So I've got to re-examine my relationship. Does that include with the fans then? Because that's my second, my second, the second thing that's kind of got me down really is um, is the uh, the number of uh, the keyboard warriors really. You know, you set up you set up a sports trust and you hope people will buy into it and you want them to become active with a small p kind of political way to try to buy into kind of the running of their club and they couldn't give us they couldn't give two monkeys could they? All they care about is a Saturday afternoon. I, that's just hugely frustrating. I've got to give you that. You know, I, I appreciate the amount of time an effort you put in yourself and then people will tell you on the internet chat rooms or whatever yeah I'm really 100% behind you when push comes to shove there's seven people turn up for a meeting on a Tuesday night to try and take things forward but it's the same thing I, I see here I'm, I'm so far away from the day to day going on at the club now I rely a lot on internet sources for information and you see weeks and weeks of doom and gloom since May you know it's going to be a nightmare season we're destined to finish bottom bonds has ruined the club we signed two players and we're going to win the championship now and, and uh, where do you where do you pitch it up well, who do you believe it's the same people you go from one extreme to the other and you just don't know what to so stay away from chat rooms that's what you're telling me yeah, you reinvent my relationship with the club and stay away from chat rooms you've got to take it with a pinch of salt but I think you've got to take chat rooms with a huge pinch of salt My third, my third then uh, issue really is that um, I, I'm quite, I'm quite political, and want to make a difference, 
and football should be a vehicle, perfect vehicle for making a difference in the world really, for, for levering social inclusion and social justice and yet all we care about, bottom line, is the money isn't it, you know, players being paid stupid amounts of money, how much cash you can get from a Sunday market but not the club as a hub of a community, you know, making a difference for that community. You know, there are better things to do with my time on a Saturday, aren't there? There must be better charities, better organisations I can go and engage with. Yeah, I think you've got to realise that you know, you've just got to accept that football at Warsaw's not like that. Football at anywhere isn't going to be like that. It is run by owners of clubs, rich people, from Abramovich right the way down to local businessmen like Bonza that are running the clubs with their own interests in heart. And they may have the interests of the club at heart to some extent, but they're never a... 100% then. and then they don't see themselves as, as part of the community in the same way that you see yourself as part of the community I'm sure um, is, football, is football redeemable? Can, we re can it be redeemed do you think or is it lost? Football is still the beautiful game you know whatever you think about your own club or the game is, I mean the game is in a terrible state with the way that all the, all the money and the success is polarised in certain big clubs in Europe it's, it really, if you sit down and think about it, it's in a poor state. But at the same token, it's still of all the sporting events you can think of. If you see a good football game, you still come away purring. Look at the way the Dutch played in Euro 2008. You know that that just left me purring. You, you, football just still has the ability just to, to be a thrilling game. So I've got to I've got to reinvent my relationship with the club. I've got to ignore chat rooms, and I've just got to accept the 90 minutes on a Saturday for what they are. Get the take the entertainment wherever I can find it. I still think the 90 minutes of a Saturday, for whatever they are, as good or as bad as it is, what you're watching, it's still going to be. You're still going to pay money to watch professional players playing a game that you love, and they can still play at a higher level than you or I could play. Okay, they're not going to win everything every week, but you've got to see there's still some entertainment value in there. So it's, it's better than going shopping, isn't it? <laughs> it's better than going shopping by a country mile. Brilliant, Paul. You're a star. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> So, it's the end of uh, the first day of the season, um, first afternoon of the season, and we've had uh, three text messages in, football related texts that is, first one from Matty Orton down in Leicester, saying oh yes, the dawn of another new era according to Mad Mandy, victory over the franchise apparently would do nicely, well actually it would to be fair, and it's pissing down as well, bring it on. The second um, from Jill and Dave, the Bantams up in Yorkshire. Uh, chicken Boona and a pint of Fernandez to the good. Here we go again. And the third, third from my sister here, um, Yeovil one, Warsaw one. Jabbo equalising with uh, equalising, or even equalising, with about 20 minutes to go. So um, not sure really what I make of that. Um, we'll see. <laughs>